to short in the fifth, an RBI double in the sixth to right. That was not hit hard. I chop off the plate. Dominguez takes a look at Beltre. He's got him in a rundown. And he throws to Altuve. And Altuve will flip to the shortstop, Belmar. <laughs> Beltre's going to wind up in Bel Air. And he is out number one with Rios on at first. This little league moment will continue right after this. <laughs> now that's. All right. Hello, everyone. This is Hunter Diller from The Take. I'm here with Nate Tussing and Ian Baldwin today. Welcome uh, back, Nate. Back from the I'm dead. Back. Been a little busy lately, <laughs> but we got him back mm -hmm. on the podcast, so it's very exciting. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how, how are you guys doing? I mean, me and Ian did a pod not long ago with, about what Carson yeah. Wentz did pretty well, which we're pretty excited about. But, Nate, we haven't heard from you in a while, man. So, how are you doing, bro? <laughs> yeah, I've been on sabbatical for a while, you know, been kept busy. <laughs> Shout out to Peaches. So I um I think that I'm ready. I'm back. I'm back in the grind, boys. I miss this. I love sports. It's all coming back. You know, they're like, oh, we got to return for Nate. So I'm doing good. Yeah, I'm excited to see, you know, how the Phillies do and what other, you know, sports things can emerge throughout the rest of the summer. Good stuff. How about you, Ian? How are you doing? It hasn't been too long since I've talked to you. but <laughs> doing, doing good, you know. Um, you know, playing a playing ton of video games, to be honest. Last of Us Part 2 came out, so I've been grinding through that. It's difficult. I die a lot, but it's a, it's a fun game. Gave me some pretty graphic dreams where I'm killing zombies, but wow. part of the territory. How you how you doing, Hunter? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for asking. I'm doing pretty good. Nothing too crazy. Good. Um, me seeing Sanjay tomorrow, which will be good. I'm like uh, finally starting to interact with people in person. <laughs> a long time coming, we're, so. we're almost opening up the green. Uh, we're days. almost in green phase. Yeah. For all of you I'm who are in different parts of the country and have been in green phase for like three months. Um, yeah, we have not. <laughs> have a, yeah, we're still, <laughs> still in quarantine. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, but, you know, with MLB is officially coming back. You know, not yeah, exactly yeah. the way both sides envisioned. Well, maybe yeah. MLB envisioned it this way. Yeah. But, you know, there was a lot of back and forth that was just very frustrating. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's coming back. So I'm really excited. Mm -hmm. I have kind of like some basic points on the proposal that I read up on today that I'm just going to read off. So yeah. opening day is set for July, either July 23rd or 24th. They're not like 100% sure on which day, but... Yep. Uh, so it's it's pretty soon. I think they're reporting soon too. So yeah, they're going to July first, I believe, is when they the players report to spring training. Yep, mm -hmm. and they're going to play sixty games in sixty six days. So a little bit less off days, but pretty much like the same thing as a regular season. I mean, it's not really that different. Um, it'll be interesting. I don't know if they're going to do an all star break or anything like that, um, mm. or they'll just maybe they'll just name all stars. That'll be interesting to follow. Yeah. But forty of the sixty games are within the division. Um, and then 20 of them are against the other corresponding divisions, so like NL East or AL East. They want to keep it local and try to contain the virus if anything happens, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. It's going to be weird playing, you know. I mean, obviously, we play the division a lot, but um, yeah, you're going to get a shot to win your division. But it's going to be weird playing teams like the Yankees and the Blue Jays and, and all them. Exclusive uh -huh. so, yeah, exactly. So. That's going to be interesting. There's still a 10-team playoff, which we're going to talk about. Um, I know, personally, I was hoping it would get expanded, but we'll get more in-depth on that later. 30-man rosters for the first two weeks, and then they're cutting it down to 28 two weeks after that. And then two weeks later, it's 26 players the rest of the season. So it'll pre it's basically going to get cut down to the, the same amount. With, well, one extra player added, obviously. But, um, you know, it's pretty much the same thing. At the same time, there's also going to be 60 players who can be available to play. So, you know, this is uncharted territory in the sense that, you know, even if you think you got your 25 guys, you know, what, what if 10 of them get hit by the virus? Then you got to bring 10 mm -hmm. guys up. So that's going to be interesting. The trade deadline is August 31st. So you're going to get one month to evaluate your team and how yeah. you're doing. Think about it. They'll probably play around 30 of the 60 games. So, I mean, it's basically you're playing half the season by then. So it's kind of like, agree. yeah, it's kind of like the halfway point anyway, mm -hmm. but it's still weird <laughs> just to have the, the trade deadline a month into the yeah. And then the National League is going to have a DH and in extra innings, they're going to start with a runner on second base, which are two things that, you know, Major League Baseball has kind of wanted to try for a while. And this is like the perfect test run because this isn't really like, mm -hmm. you know, a typical season, obviously. So you can, you can test it out. A lot of people are talking about like Adam Silver and the NBA testing 
out like a one through 16 bracket. So this is like the perfect opportunity. I don't, that's not going to happen, but for the MLB, this is like the perfect opportunity for them to test this stuff out. And then, you know, players are only going to receive, I think, don't quote me on this. I'm pretty sure this is what ESPN said, but 37% of their salaries, which is not even close to the 75% or 70% they got offered. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's going to be interesting. And then last thing that is really exciting, the mascots will be allowed at the games. So, I mean, there we go. But, <laughs> I don't, I don't, it wouldn't have been the same without them, at least being a Phillies fan. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's the basics of it. It's coming back. We're very excited. Mm-hmm. We're all big baseball fans. We're all wearing our Phillies jerseys right now. Um, I was going to match with Nate, but I'm letting him wear the Cutch <laughs> jersey. Um, My boy Cutch, saw that guy. <laughs> Cutch for 2020 president or Uncle Larry, <laughs> as we like to call him. But <laughs> let's, uh, let's jump right into this. So, Nate, let's start with you now that you're back. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. What were kind of your re- initial reactions to the whole thing? and how this all ended up playing out with the disagreements and just like tell us what you think about some of the major points of the deal. Yeah, I think to be like the first team or the first sports organization to kind of declare, or, you know, one of the big four, I'm sure, you know, soccer and NASCAR, they've all done that, but this is one of the big four teams uh, sports. And it's tough to, you know, you know, make that because you have to consider safety, money, all kinds of things. And so I'll be honest, I didn't expect there to be a season, you know, a couple months, weeks ago, you know, back, I was like, you know, I don't see it happening. Um, the thing that uh, I think I said this a while ago when we were talking about quarantine sports is that baseball, it's out open in the air. You're not super close to people always. Yeah. So it's a little bit easier to, you know, be safe with that. Um, it's it's tough to to have discussions and, you know, what the season will look like because it's we've never had any practice for them to base this off, off of. Uh, but I think, you know, some places they were better in, some they were worse. Um, I like the idea of them – this being like a test year, so to say, with having a second baseman in extra innings in the NHL or the NL uh, having a DH. I'm excited for that because I'll be honest, it's just not fun watching a pitcher bat. You know, like, <laughs> it's just like, it's like, it's a guaranteed out. I mean, maybe Unless if it's, it's Bartolo Colon or, or Bartolo Colon, Colon. Yeah, Colon. Yeah, that guy Colon. Has, you know, he gets Colon. the exception. He's the DH for whatever team he'll be on. Um, but yeah, I think that they definitely, you know, considered a lot of things, the safety, the uh, making sure that, you know, everybody's satisfied because everybody's losing money right now in the whole sports business and they got to start doing something. And I think that this was a good alternative, a good, um, a good opening step for other sports organizations to start their season up again. The tough thing is that everybody's going to be coming in all at once, um, you know, for sports. And so it's going to be tough to get that peak audience that they normally would get, you know, when baseball is the only sport going on. Um, but you know, I'm excited to see what happens, how the season plays out, how different teams adjust, adapt, and of course how the Phillies do. That's the that's gonna be the coolest thing to watch. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, like you said, I was really I thought at one point there was not gonna be baseball this year. I actually thought that with the NBA too, and then they handled it very well, but baseball was not handling it very well mm. on, on every and from every every side, every aspect of it, there was, you know, there were yeah. there was each side was in the wrong in some, um, in some area in, you know, to some extent, whether you are, you know, on one side or not, there was issues going on, obviously. And it was tough to watch, but I'm really, like you said, I'm really glad baseball is back. The DH is going to be really, really interesting. Like you said, this is a Mm -hmm. test year, which is a little disappointing because like, you know, like you said, baseball is not going to be the same because the ratings won't be there. Um, I guess that's kind of good for since it's a test year and if it doesn't go well, then, you know, people, a lot of people didn't like miss a ton if they were watching other mm-hmm. sports, but, but yeah, great stuff. So Ian, let's hear what you got on it, man. Well, as both of you know, I may be one of if not the biggest sports <laughs> club fans ever. Um, I'm really excited to see my man back here in Philly. I know he missed us. I sure as heck know I missed him. Um, so, to say the least, pretty happy baseball's back. Um, uh, yes, he is going to stay here for a little bit while I talk about the prospects of the season. But uh, my issue – I actually kind of have a problem with the DH. Um, I hope it doesn't stay just because I actually liked the element of – making the manager a little bit more important because there were times when in a game when it's like you're down by maybe a run or two 
But at the same time, your pitcher is just completely cruising and you do not want to – like, they're hot. They're staying hot. They're showing no signs of slowing down. But at the same time, it's like the sixth of the seventh inning and you're going to need that extra run. Um, and I liked kind of that, like, what should they do? And, like, it really, I think, separated the good managers from the not-so-good managers in some, in some ways and others. I think it made the manager, you know, role – not that the manager of a baseball team is not important. I mean, it is. But I think in terms of, like, in-game importance, it made the manager very – it made it just a little more – it had it added a strategic edge that I really enjoyed in the NL. Um, but to Nate's point, I can understand, like, yeah, you know, like watching a pitcher hit, like the best you're hoping for is a walk or like, you know, a ground out that will advance the runners. Like they're getting at Like the best you can hope for is that they either advance the runners or just like get a single. Like we, you know, it's not that fun to watch, which I can understand. But just from my perspective, I thought that was a little more interesting. Um, in terms of the negotiations and how it went down, it was very ugly. Again, Hunter, like you said, both points, both, both sides had some to blame. Um, but all in all, I mean, it was – I felt very frustrated, but at the same time, I'm just relieved that it's coming back because at the end of the day, I missed baseball. It wouldn't have been the same year. It wouldn't have been the same summer without baseball. The good news is the MLB will have at least a solid week or so um, before – the NBA and the NHL start, um, you know, so that's going to be and kind of like, hopefully that I think that might boost ratings just because it's like the first major live sport that's coming back. And who knows, like maybe some people will fall in love with the sport, but at the same time, I also know, you know, okay, well, Sixers are on in the playoffs versus a, regular season Phillies game, like, obviously I know which choice yeah. I'm going to make. You know, same with the Flyers. I mean, Flyers are vying for a cup right now. I mean, they, they're in this position, and if it's Flyers or, Philly, like, you know, a regular Phillies game, my choice is pretty easy, which kind of stinks that they, they put themselves in this position because I think if they had gotten it done earlier, I think it could have been the best thing for baseball because you would have brought in – such a massive audience, and like Nate was saying, it's an outdoor sport that, you know, if someone sneezes, it's outside. Like, and also not that, you know, not to go too deep into corona, but it doesn't hang around in the air that much anyway. Um, I think it was kind of a whiffed opportunity, but I guess all in all in summary, I am ecstatic that baseball coming back. All right. Hello, everyone. Sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties thanks to my connection. So you guys can blame me for that. Um, <laughs> I, I have terrible lighting now. Um, been, <laughs> been some Wi-Fi issues today. Just, just uh, <laughs> get that off the board. I think I'm good now. But um, anyway, though, we were kind of wrapping up with like, you know, our general reactions slash opinions. Um, we're, we're all, I think basically, point being, we're all excited baseball is back. I think he made a good point with the DH. Um, you know, it's kind of been with baseball being America's pastime. That's just kind of been the way it's been, which is weird because I don't know how, I, I really don't know how that started with the whole DH thing and how they decided, mm -hmm. you know, when, I guess um, when the merger happened or whatever. But anyway, you know, that is the way it's been. But at the same time, like outside of Madison Bumgarner, you're not getting too many guys who are, you know, <laughs> take yeah. I remember, I think Bumgarner was a DH. Um, or Shohei. Yeah, Shohei. Yeah, Shohei. Yeah, Shohei is the exception. Um, and I think Bumgarner was like a DH a couple years ago for the the Giants and got like a double or something. So out, mm -hmm. outside of like guys like that, you know, it's right, hard right. to watch. But anyway, um, with with it being back, we've seen a lot of NBA players have already come out and said they're not going to play. You know, we know Zach Wheeler on the Phillies today said he's going to be there for the birth of his son. Totally understandable. Um, I think they're expecting it. I want to say opening day or July 1st, something yeah, like that. He said opening day is when he's expecting their child. Hopefully, prayerfully, we get a healthy premature baby so that <laughs> way, you know, he can, uh, he can be ready by uh, the time we need him. 
Yeah, but right, you know, right. you got players like him who was totally understandable. There's other players with different individual situations, which we've stressed with the NBA, even the NHL. I'm sure there's there's guys who have certain situations they don't want to come back to the uh, the sport yet. It's not most important. Uh, excuse me, most important to them. But what do you guys think? You guys think there's going to be a lot of players with? I think just with how this whole thing has played out with the disagreements, you know, a lot of them have said like, oh, we're going to play, like, tell us when and where we're going to play during this whole disagreement. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, this has been pretty frustrating and now the MLB has just mandated it. And for some of them, not making any money wouldn't make a difference for them as well. Mm -hmm. So do you guys think we're going to see like a lot of players bow out Mm -hmm. of this this potential return? Or do you think we're going to see like a good amount of them already like showing up because we've already had like the Phillies and Rockies have had COVID cases already. So yeah. already, you know, obviously there's the risk involved as well. Um, you know, yeah. for their demographic, it's not anything crazy, but at the same time, some of them, you know, you just don't want to get it. Um, and you don't want to like be stuck mm-hmm. there for that many months and all that um, under right, their rules right. and all that. So Ian, let's start with you on this one. What do you, what do you think? So I do think we're going to get a lot of players because just for the sole fact, I think they just – some of them just want to stay sharp and just stay, you know, stay ready. I don't think – you know, because say what you will, not there's – like taking a year off from baseball is definitely going to throw at least some rust on there for one. And I think that they don't want to <clears> – they don't want to get rusty and lose some of those skills. Also, just not to mention like just the – you know, the biological clock that you would kind of have of just being used to playing games every other day. Like, I think that would get kind of thrown out of whack, and I think they know it. Also, not to mention, these guys, I mean, granted, it's not what they wanted, but thankfully for them, they are getting fully prorated salaries. They are, um, you know, it's only 10 games less than what they wanted, which is, granted, a lot of money. But in the grand scheme of things, it's only 10 games less than what they wanted. We've seen guys like Bryce Harper and um, Justin Verlander who are just really ready, really excited to come back. And to be quite honest, like I feel like a lot, at least for a lot of good players, it's for the love of the game and it's for the competition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, granted, the money, you know, a lot of them are doing it for the money. But I think ultimately they also realize, like, you know, okay, we're getting fully prorated salaries, 10 less games, um, not to mention they are taking every precaution. I mean, I know, like, pitchers are responsible for bringing their own, you know, um, I think it's resin bags or something like that. Resin um, bags, yeah, the little well, powder. I don't know why I said resin because that, that would make it, their hands sticky. But <laughs> like, pitchers are allowed to bring a wet towel – to, you know, polish off the ball and, like, stuff like that. They're taking every precaution. I think, honestly, the players that aren't going to show up are the ones who um, are honestly the ones who maybe have expecting wives or sick family members. Um, For the most part, from what I've seen, there aren't too many players. I think the only one who wouldn't show up, quite honestly, is Blake Snell. Um but that's about it. Like, I think we're getting pretty much everyone back uh, when it's all said and done. Yeah, for sure. I think to your point with um, with things being different with, you know, little things like rosin bags and the towels, it's going to be weird that they're all showing up. I just thought of this, that, like, it's going to be almost like high school and Little League when you just show up oh, yeah. in your uniform, which is mm-hmm. almost, like, kind of cool because you kind of get a little bit of nostalgia um, mm-hmm. as a player. But, you know, it's definitely going to be a lot different. I thought – I think I saw – Someone sent me today, like, I think it was, like, a 100-page document on everything that – all the, like, specifics of this whole um, – yeah. how everything's going to play out this season. And there were, like, diagrams of where each player needs to sit on the bench. And these were just, like – I just skimmed through it, too. I didn't even read it in depth. Um, so it's definitely going to be interesting with the little things like that. So, Nate, let's hear what you got on this. What What do you think? Do you think a lot of players are going to come back? I do, yeah. I think come back. <laughs> I I definitely I agree with Ian and you. I think that a lot of players will come back. Um, you see, you know, basketball players saying they're going to sit out. Unfortunately, basketball has been a sport that hasn't been uh, hasn't had its lacking of controversy and drama. It's a very drama filled sport. 
uh, hockey, it's kind of up in the air. There's, there's uh, some drama and fight, but that's part of the sport. So uh, I think for basketball, you have a lot more people um, sitting out. But for baseball, baseball is America's pastime. You know, it's a great sport. Um, you just see different at, an, a different atmosphere at a baseball park with the players, the fans, just everything. And it's, it's very unique. You know, people, people play the game with respect. There's a lot of, you know, unwritten rules, but they're just there because of the respect and the, and the, the yeah. type of game that it is. And so I think a lot of these players are going to be continuing to play it, you know, because of that respect and that, you know, passion to play. They enjoy playing the game. They love the competition, the, you know, the hot dog smell in the air, you know, all that stuff. Um, so I think a lot of players, I think, like you guys said, there's exceptions to um, a lot of different players, depending on health situations and, you know, just things around with the family. But a lot of, you know, not so popular baseball players, I think will still be interested in playing because this could be an opportunity for them to show if other people have to get out because of the coronavirus, they'll have to come in. So this is a good opportunity for them um, in some cases. So I think we'll be seeing a lot of, if not all of our players returning, um, which would be awesome to see everybody back. It's been nice having this little break because a lot of injured players that wouldn't have come back, you know, were able at clutch. <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, it, it'll be cool to see, um, you know, how everybody does. Cause I think everybody just wants to get back to playing baseball and, you know, um, I'm excited to watch them play. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Rip Sir Anthony Dominguez. I mean, cause I don't even think he can get his Tommy John surgery because of the whole COVID thing. Which is, just, mm. uh, I think, I think the the timeline is like he might not even play until at the earliest mid twenty twenty one season, which is very sad. Because really? um, I, you know, Ian loves Sir Anthony. I really like Sir Anthony. Mm-hmm. He's he's fun to use on MLB the Show too. <laughs> it's pretty Real dumb. Good. And it makes shout out <laughs> Cubs. It pisses him off when he can't get a hit on Sir Anthony. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, personally, I I do think we're going to see some players bow out soon just because of the nature of this whole thing being uncharted territory and how with the NBA, it took a little, little time for some players to, you know, there were, there was more guys who kind of sat out as it went on. So I think we're going to see more guys um, sit out as time goes on maybe, but I'm hoping that they all return. All right. So I had to switch locations once again. Sorry about that. There's been a lot of stuff going on in my house today and we're all like trying to figure out, we're supposed to go. Hopefully my connection holds up mm-hmm. in the room this time. But anyway, if not, <laughs> we'll figure that out. When we'll cross the bridge when we get there. But mm-hmm. um, moving on, I mentioned the 10-team playoff format at the beginning of the podcast. And, you know, obviously they maintained it. Personally, I was hoping maybe they would expand it just because I feel like there's a good amount of teams that deserve it that don't get in, which I'll get into. But um, – yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say on the summary of this. You know, if you didn't hear, they, they're they sticking with the playoff, the 10-team playoff format. Even after, I think they had multiple discussions and offered to expand mm-hmm. it, which is – I might be wrong about which side offered to expand it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, right. I would I, – I personally have a strong opinion about this, but I want to hear your guys' take first. So, Nate, what do you what do you think about this? Do you think – you think you like keeping it this way, or do you, do you think they should maybe think about expanding it? Um – yeah, I, I would have liked to see uh, maybe an expansion and then a modification because uh, unfortunately an expansion would take more time and that would eat more into the NFL, all yeah, these other sports teams. True. So it would be tough. I would have liked to see it because it's going to be hard for a lot of teams to shine um, with such a short season. You know, um, I think a lot of teams, especially for the Phillies, you know, who knows what's going to happen. But, you know, I was hoping for a little bit more of a boost. It would have been cool also to kind of just see what it's like to have a multiple you know, a, a bigger playoff format because that's what the the uh, hockey's doing, and it's funny because the Blackhawks, man, they don't even have a 500 record, you know. So, um, it, it would have been interesting to see. I would have liked to see it, but I get why they didn't do it because you know, first off, there's so many <laughs> discussions and arguments and conflicts going on. But <laughs> on top of that, it's hard. It would be hard to, you know, w- wiggle that in. And I think they just went with the safer, easier route out. Yeah, that's um, a good but point. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, sorry to cut you off. But yeah, that's a no, good. I, I got nothing else. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't even think about the fact that with with this season, it's gonna, you know, not only do you have the M- NFL going on, but now you've got likely the, I think the NBA finals set for like October twelfth, and then NHL is probably gonna be not far from mm-hmm. that either. So I mean, you know, that, that's a good point. Ian, what do you have to say on it, man? Um, they kind of hit it right on the head. Honestly, um, I would have liked to have seen an expanded playoff just because. 
Um, to be quite honest, there's nothing like playoff baseball. It is an electric, exciting atmosphere. Um, also, not to mention, like, I feel like MLB is the the one where you're like, anything could happen. I mean, look, you know, as much, much as I hate the team, look at the Nationals. I yeah. loathe the Nationals. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, they were barely a wild card team. And they wound up winning the World Series. Like, you know, and – I think it's – there are teams like that. Like, to be quite honest, I think the Blue Jays could have been that, like, Nationals-type team where, you know, they could grab a wild card spot, catch some lightning in a bottle, and maybe ride it all the way out. You know, I would have loved to have seen it. Um, but, like Nate also said, um, there's still – the NFL is full steam ahead on a full season yeah. on top, which I – incredibly thankful for but you're going to be really competing with that mm-hmm. also not to mention nba finals um is just going to pull away from it yeah um, even though it's a shorter you know awkward season that's going to pull from it nhl stanley cup um i don't think it's quite as big as the world series so i don't think you're going to get much pull from it mm-hmm. but at the same time you might pull some audience the point being though is that um, you know, you have so much diverted attention. I understand why they wanted the 10 team playoff, uh, you know, um, format. And honestly, you know, looking at it from the perspective of, okay, well, if the Phil, because I would hate to have to choose the Phillies are in a World <laughs> Series, but it's Dal, it's Dallas week. Like that would be. Yeah. A- me that would be an actual nightmare because I don't know how the heck I could choose that like right. so I can kind of understand why like mm-hmm. as just as a you know just being a fan of all Philadelphia sports I can I can see it why they made that decision mm-hmm. and also it's a better financial decision for the MLB they're not they're not losing as much attention and you know they're getting the views that they want mm-hmm. yeah for sure I think you guys both made a great a great point that I didn't think about with the ratings Personally, as a fan of baseball myself, like just just thinking like about the teams I've seen in previous years, it is just really frustrating because ten teams is such a small format in my opinion. It's not too too small, but like I mm. I do feel like a lot of teams get gypped out of spots every year. So yeah. just like I'm gonna take a little bit of different spin on it. Just looking from their perspective, I really do wish they had expanded it. Um, like you said, like with the ratings and everything, and you know scheduling conflicts with other sports, I totally understand it, so I'm not mad about it. But I think in the future it definitely needs to be considered because oh, um, you look at the Indians last year. I'm a big Indians guy. I love Francisco Lindor. I mean, they had 93 wins, and they, they got eliminated from the playoffs. Like, that's a team who could sneak in. And not it's not even like the Nationals where they kind of, like, just snuck in. They, I mean, they, they had a pretty good record, but I think the Indians had a little bit of a better record, if I remember correctly. Don't quote me on that. But point being, it's a good team that could have really made some noise in the playoffs that didn't get a shot. And even, you know, much as I hate the Mets, they did have 86 wins. And yeah. for in terms of, like, things like a, a headline you really want to watch, having Pete Alonso, you know, go into the playoffs, that's a very good headline for the MLB mm-hmm. to have and that they could have had last year that yeah. they, it wasn't a possibility because of the playoff format. And you had you had five total teams that were six games over five hundred last year. It wasn't like they were just like you know eight and eight, nine and seven in NFL terms. They were they were kind of like ten and six caliber in my opinion. So you know the NFL right. just expanded their playoff. I mean the NBA has sixteen out of their thirty teams make it. I'd I'd personally mm-hmm. like to see maybe like you know a twelve to fourteen team bracket where you get like. I don't know. You get like the the one seed gets a buy, and then the six and seven play, and then you have like the two and the yeah. five play, and the three through four, something like that. You know, um, I just think it's like you know you see the NL Central, as bad as the Reds have been and have gotten crap for how bad they've been. I think mm-hmm. in another division, they they might have been legit divisional contenders. Um, and this is something I talk to even my Cubs fans about. They're like the Reds are really like they're just stuck in a really good division. Even the Pirates like aren't you know they're not making the playoffs every year but like they can yeah. they're kind of like a spoiler at the end of the season so i really do want to see them expand it soon i mm-hmm. like you guys said though it's understandable why they wouldn't do it this season um so yeah, yeah. i think we kind of kind of hit everything on that 
Now for a little mm-hmm. bit of a more fun segment. Um, mm-hmm. Potential Cinderella teams, which is something me and Sanjay did for, or me, Sanjay, and Dan did for one of our previous podcasts for the NBA. Um, you know, there's a shortened season. Maybe some players don't return. Anyone could get the virus and go out. That could be a potential advantage just from a baseball standpoint. Obviously, you don't want anyone to get the virus. It's not Ooh, something yeah. you, don't, you don't hope for anyone to get injured. Except maybe Ezekiel Elliott, but that's a conversation for another time. <laughs> um, on a serious note, though, like, you know, you don't want anyone to get the virus, but the reality is that could really affect the race this year and how things work right, out. Right. And, you know, if, if one of them gets it, maybe there's like, oh, well, that guy was in the, his, his roommate at his hotel, or I don't know what, you know, you get the point. Yeah, you know, yeah. People might be quarantined at the same time. I, it's almost a blessing in disguise the Phillies got it now so that, you know, some of their guys got it and – they'll be good for the season hopefully um but i'm gonna start off with this one um if that's Mm -hmm. okay Um, but um my first cinderella team is the angels i really do think the angels are a pitching staff away from being a a playoff team now that's Mm -hmm. also like a big part of the, the team obviously if you don't have a good pitching staff you just like you know even the phillies in 08 didn't have a great pitching staff but guys stepped up when it mattered most you had Hamels. Who, right, right. Well, Hamels was just the bona fide ace. He was never a question. But, um, you know, you had some other guys in that rotation who were a little bit iffy, you know, going into the playoffs. Um, and then, mm-hmm. you know, the playoffs, they just really came through and did their job. The Angels really don't have that. But outside of that, I like their bullpen a lot. I think Hansel Robles, you know, he had a pretty solid year as a closer last year. I think maybe he's going to take a step forward this upcoming year. Um, you know, you're good at ERA. I mean, he didn't look bad last year. He did blow some saves, but I think that's a year to build upon, hopefully. Um, I like Cam Bredosian. I think he's a very good – I don't know if he's, I said his name right, but I think he's, good, he's, a, good, <laughs> he's a good reliever. You know, I think, I think he's a guy – him and Kenyon Middleton, both very good um, late-inning relievers who, you know, obviously they haven't played in the big game yet, but sometimes, you know, you get to that playoff game and someone comes out of nowhere and has one of the greatest innings of their life <laughs> or gets out of a big yeah. game playoff, so – I like them. I think you got some veteran leaders there with, with Albert Pujols and Justin Upton. Um, you know, those are guys who can hopefully hold the locker room together through this whole thing, you know, not being together. Um, I'm not personally a fan of Justin Upton, um, but, you know, at the end of the day, they've been, they've been around the league for a while. They know how things yeah. work. Um, I love Angelton Simmons. I, you know, I hated that he played for the Braves for a while, but he's, he was such, he was, he's like a bona fide gold glove candidate every year. And, and then when he went to Angels, he really started to hit better. Last year, he took a little step down hitting-wise, but still had a solid year compared to his Atlanta years. Um, Tommy Lastella was the surprise for them last year after, you know, being pretty much a bench warmer to start his career. Um, I'm looking at my the roster I have here. You know, Ian, I know you hate him, but Anthony Rendon is a pretty good player. Oh. I, yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, Zach talks about him a lot. I mean, he, his last three seasons have just been insane. To think about um mm-hmm. the fact that they brought him in is pretty impressive then you look at the outfield yeah. you know i know you don't like mike trout oh. either <laughs> but you know very talented player. We don't deserve to call himself a philadelphian <laughs> <laughs> and then you got shohei otani who Ian, you do mm-hmm. like him so i love shohei <laughs> He's, oh um, my gosh i love him but you know shohei's very good and you also got you know um I know Joe Adele is the prospect. I'm trying to think of the uh, Brian something. Anyway, it was it's a guy from the Nationals who uh, Brian Goodwin. That's who it is. Um, yeah, he had like a decent year last year, and then you have Joe Adele, who's been a highly touted prospect. I think there's a lot to work with there. You know, I don't know if they're gonna mm-hmm. you know, catch lightning in a bottle this season, but I think they're a team to watch for sure. I think they could be dangerous mm-hmm. if they get hot. You know, we've seen Anthony Rendon get hot against the Phillies. It's hard to watch. But yeah, I think I think they're a team to watch. And then, oh, the Blue Jays! I love the Blue Jays oh, so much. Oh, <laughs> good pick, good you know, I love them. I, Honor, I wanted to pick them for mine. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, man. Vladdy's just I I I've, I've been a big Vladdy fan ever since you know he's been in the minors. Mm-hmm. I was so excited when he came up to the big leagues. I got a shirt like right away. Um, you know, you've got you've got three guys who are sons of former major league players, and him, Bo Bichette, and Kevon Biggio. Oh. Who just know they know how to how to like be in a clubhouse. You know they grew up in a clubhouse most likely with their dads, and you know they they know how to play the game the right way. Um, mm-hmm. You know they're still pretty young, but 
I really like that young core. They added a uh, Kenjin Ryu. I don't know if I said his name right, but he was very good with the Dodgers for quite a long time when healthy, but that's a big pitch up because they didn't really have a great rotation. I think they added um, Tanner Roark too, who's a pretty solid, like he can, he can keep you in a game at the least. I think, you know, he's not, he's not mm-hmm. going to, not going to be a lights out pitcher, but he can keep you in the game. Um, you know, they added Chase Anderson from Brewers. I'm looking at here. Who's like another guy, you know, I think the rotation compared to the angels, they're guys who can keep you in a game, you know, Jason Vargas wasn't, this isn't a great example, but what, before he came to the Phillies with the Mets, <laughs> he was a guy who could like keep you in a game, which, you know, yeah. the ERA might not show it, but if you, it's kind of like a game manager in football. I feel like that term in football is kind of getting overused a little bit with some guys. Um, mm-hmm. But in baseball, a guy like J- Jason Vargas, when he's, you know, obviously doing well, you know, <laughs> yeah. there's some other, right, right. but you know, you get the point. <clears throat> Ken Giles. Um, I miss him in Philly. It's a shame. You know, we had we made that trade. It seemed like a good decision at the time, but didn't end up really working out for us, I guess you could say. But I do think, you know, he's got a lot he's a guy who's got a lot of fire and tenacity on the mound. So I really like him. Um obviously mentioned the young guys. I really think this is a nice mix of like youth and some veteran players that, you know, <laughs> if Vladdy gets hot at the end of the season, this thing could be over. Like this could be like a LeBron show type of thing. And I'm going to say it. I think LeBron, I think Vladdy could be that caliber of player in the MLB. If, wow. you know, he has to reach his ceiling. That's a big stretch, obviously. He's got a long way to go. But maybe we see it this year. You know, it's a shortened season. They're not going to be as fatigued at the end of the season. Maybe it happens. Maybe he just absolutely goes off. We saw Juan Soto do it last year. Kid's only like 21 years old. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, those are those are my two teams. I think I think I'm I'm excited to see how they do. I think that it could go either way. They can be a complete bust, or they could you know have a very good season. So, um, right, eight, right. let's move on to you for this one, man. I um, you guys stole all the teams. You know they're good teams, but um, <laughs> I, I thought a little bit deeper. Um, I'm I'm a fan. I'm fans of these teams. I uh, I like a lot of players in the teams, but uh, these two teams that I pick, nobody's going to consider them. You know any type of. Uh, any type of, you know, chance at winning anything. So my first team is the Seattle Mariners. Um, last year when I was watching, you know, getting in the early season, I was like, the Mariners are kind of popping off. They were, uh, they were. 13 and yeah. two. They started to fall. They were 17 and 11. They, they had some potential. They were doing good. They had my boy D Gordon, King <laughs> Felix, Edwin and Carcion. I love all those guys. And, and they seemed like they were, they were, you know, actually going to be a, a viable team. They led the division for a while. And then, just went downhill from there. And um, I, I'd like to say the reason is because they traded away Jay Bruce. No. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, Probably. <laughs> yeah, they, they fizzed out. And I think that this shortened season could mm. be an opportunity for them with how strong they started. Now they lost, you know, they lost a few, a few weapons in there, here and there, you know, King Phillips. They didn't have the best off season. It wasn't bad. It just, they didn't do anything drastic, you know, like, you know, so um, I think that if they can, hold on a little bit longer they might be able to squeeze in a spot but you're looking at a team that finished last in their division and you know had such a promising start so I think that this if there's any chance of them you know making a statement I think it's this year Uh, my second team is also another last place finisher the San Diego Padres I love Fernando Tati now the Padres (laughs) I I think that I mean, if you look at, again, last season, they didn't do amazing, but they were 18 and 11, 28 and 25. They weren't doing terrible, but they just collapsed at the end of the season. They, they fizzed out, um, and I, I think it's just everything about their team wasn't that good. They actually had a pretty good offseason, I'm not going to lie. Um, Kirby Yates, that guy is a, yeah. a beast. I mean, he's, he, 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 he was 0 and 5, which, you, you know, it doesn't matter for a relief pitcher, but he had yeah. 1.19 ERA. 101 strikeouts, 41 saves at a 60 game start. So this guy, for how bad the Padres did at the end of the season, he was consistently good. I love this guy. He used to be on my uh, MLB 2019 uh, tap sports uh, team. <laughs> I loved him. He was insane. Um, they also got, you know, Brian Dozier. He went to the minors because he's kind of been dipping, but he, I love that guy uh, when he was on the Twins, I think. Um, and then Tommy Pham, too, in left field. That guy is fast. And I remember when I had him in fantasy a couple of years ago, he was. He was getting stolen bases. So I think that they have the right tools. And again, they fizzed out last season. Um, but I'd like to see them flourish. It's just a tough division, you know, like, ugh. it's, 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 
it's unfortunate, you know, with who they have. They've got uh, the Dodgers are always going to be giants <laughs> every year, and I don't think I don't think they're going to be able to squeak by them. But you know, it's not unopened. You know, that the the Diamondbacks are they did pretty good last year, but uh, you got the Giants, eh, you know, the Rockies, and eh. so it's not out of the question. It's just going to be tough for them, um, and they're two very big underdogs that I'd like to see flourish who had promising starts but collapsed in the end. So those are my two teams. Uh, very uncommon, unpopular, but uh, yeah. That's why I'm the wild card, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, with the shortened season and the virus, anything could happen this year. That's true. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, those are young rosters. Um, oh, yeah. If their players take big steps in development, it's always a possibility. Plus, like you said, D. Gordon. There. <laughs> yeah, D. Gordon. Love that guy. He but, had some controversies, but I love that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, Ian, speaking of controversial, um, oh, yeah. one, of, oh. one of yours here, <laughs> you got some interesting choices. So, so let's hear him, Ian. So, I'm just going to preface this with this. Call me a scumbag. Call me every name in the book. I'm – I still like the Astros. I Ooh, still like no, I'm <laughs> I am a fa- I am a fan. I, I love, love, love Justin Verlander. I love Alex Bregman. But before you call me those names, and I want to bring it back real quick, and I promise I will get to my point. If you are still a fan of Tom Brady and you're still a fan of the New England Patriots, which I know, Zach Cublins, you are, and and you tell me that you shouldn't be a fan when they cheated, bro, the Patriots cheated much worse and on a much larger scale than the Astros did. I'm not condoning what they did, but I'm just saying. My point being, I think it's a Cinderella story, well, for me anyway, because I think they still have a ton of talent. I mean, you still have Altuve, who is a really, really good – plays second base, right? I'm, like, 99% sure. I just yeah, don't yeah. have my stuff in front of me. Oh, you're good, yeah. Altuve, wrong. He played cheater. <laughs> you have a lineup of really solid bats. They're very good. They have an incredible farm system, which – like, their farm system's out of this world in terms of bringing up solid bats. Not to mention, you still have Verlander and Grinky in your rotation. You had a decent bullpen. Not much has really changed aside from you lost Garrett Cole. And to be quite honest, you know, um, (laughs) they still had a pretty good rotation. I mean, Garrett Cole, don't get me wrong, is a huge hit. He was obviously Uh Cy Young, you know, that year. But they're still a good team. And to be quite honest, I still think they can get it done. Alex Bregman has been handling this incredibly well by just putting his head down, not defending it, not saying anything, and he's been grinding this whole offseason. I really like – I think they're going to do something here, and people are going to be mad about it. People are going to be mad that the Astros are succeeding even though that they can no longer cheat. I I called it even at the beginning of the season. I said, look, like it or not, the Astros are too talented to not make the playoffs. And to be quite honest, even if they have a halfway decent manager in there, I think they're still going to make it. Not to mention the fact that Justin Verlander's 37, and he was 37 now. I don't know. He might have been 36 at the time Cy Young was going. But he was in the running for Cy Young, which is incredible. So they still have a really good team around them. And even though, again, they're not allowed to cheat, I still think they're going to do something. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they were allowed to cheat the first time, I'll be honest. You know what I mean. They're being <laughs> I know, I know. Much closely, much, they're being much more closely reprimanded. You know what I mean. Uh, I hope someone drilled You know me. what I mean. Thank you for clearing that up, though. I would have yeah. really looked mm-hmm. a little stooge. Yeah. But mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. not like yeah. I don't already to most people after saying I still like the Astros. <laughs> but my other Cinderella team, I have to say it because I firmly believe it, are the Philadelphia Phillies. Um, great addition with, you know, Didi Gregorius, Nate's guy. Know how much he loves him. That was a solid bat that we really, really needed in our lineup. In our, in our lineup. Also, not to mention, I wasn't a huge fan of the signing, but we needed him, and I'm happy that we got him, is Zach Wheeler. I think he's going to make – he's really going to shore up our rotation. Hopefully, Arietta will be pitching better due to the fact that he got his bone spur surgery. He's had so much time to recover. So hopefully 
he can, you know, get it under control and he can be that solid number three now that we have um, – now that we have um, – uh, Wheeler as our number two. I, I literally, anyway, um, not to mention Zach Eflin started heating up, getting red hot at the end of last year. Yeah. And it's sad that he got hot when you found out why he got hot. Because the reason he got so hot was because he said outright that he stopped listening to his pitching coaches. <sighs> and now that you have Girardi's guys in there, you have Joe Girardi as your, your manager. I think you're really going to see a major improvement out of Zach Cobble. I mean, not out of Zach Cobble. Out of Zach Wheeler. Gosh dang it. Out of Zach Wheeler. I mean, not Zach Wheeler. Zach Eflin. Gosh dang it. Ian knows this Phillies, ladies and gentlemen. I, there's just so many Zachs. I'm sorry. Uh, you will see a major improvement out of Zach Wheeler. Oh, Oh, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I, I can't believe I even said Zach Cole. I didn't even say Zach. Oh, anyway. Um, is a major improvement out of Zach Eflin. Zach <laughs> Eflin. He will pitch well. Zach Eflin will pitch well the whole season, Is in my opinion. Also, not to mention, Bryce has been grinding. Bryce showed a massive improvement when Charlie Manuel was the hitting coach. And I think you're going to see a – Jump in batting average now that you have Girardi, an old school baseball kind of guy who's going to come in. You got Girardi's batting coaches in there. I think all in all, this team is just going to shore up now that you we address the management, now that we address, address the staff. And I think ultimately, this team will just come out of nowhere and be a, a powerhouse, in my opinion. And I'm really excited for it. Yeah, personally, I'm really excited. I think. Especially the addition of Zach Covlins. Oh, man, that kid could play. Um, you just look at a guy who just, he's just got the speed. He can throw. He can hit for contact. He can hit for power. He can pitch. Worst comes to worst, he can just annoy the other pitcher to death with what a fanboy he is over him. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I do think Covlins is going to be a big addition to the team. But on a serious note, <laughs> <laughs> the Phillies I agree. are <laughs> – the Phillies really are an interesting team this year. I'm excited. I'm going to get a little mm -hmm. more from Zach Hoblins later. Or, Eflin. Yeah. Oh, I'm messing up, too. <laughs> Eflin. Oh, oh gosh. It's because I had boy, to make a joke oh about it. But, um, but yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, great teams, guys. Ian, personally, I can't mm -hmm. hop on board with the Astros one. Personally, I don't think they're going to know what's hit them, quite literally, since they're not going to know what's pitch is coming and they're going to be being thrown at. Just had to get back. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, though. Make them pay. Definitely. Um, I think you made some good points, though, that I didn't think about. So, mm -hmm. I'm excited mm -hmm. to see all these teams. And, Ian, I'm going to have you go back-to-back. -back. So, you, yeah, also have, you also have some Phillies and Astros for um, I, next two questions. I am. But, um, so, let's hear it, man. Let's, let's see. Who's your, who are your potential MVP candidates with the season being so short? All right. First of all, let me just preface – Zach Cullins is my roommate, so I rag on him a lot. I love the kid. Let me <laughs> a lot. Guys, if you guys didn't see, I posted I need, those videos. Too. A lot. <laughs> I, need to, I need to just clear that up because I know he, he, he comes up in a lot of videos. But anyway. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> we're talking about MVP, right? I'm sorry. Yep. I just had to. Oh, no, you're up. good. Yeah, MVP. yeah, we're on MVP. So, again, I'll make you hate me before you – I'll make you love me again. So, MVP – I do believe Alex Bregman can go, go up for this. I, I really like the kid, Hunter. I know you bring up a great point where he won't know what pitches are coming. <laughs> I don't think it matters to uh, him. I like, F he, or I like Bregman from LSU. Right. Okay. I was, was going to say he was good coming up in college. He's a hard worker, which I really like. He was in the running for rookie of the year. And honestly, he's just a very level – like he is one of the most level-headed players I have seen in baseball considering all the, the crap storm that is going on around him. And I think he could be a real real difference maker for the Astros. And I think, quite honestly, if he lifts them to the position that I think he will, to where they can still make the playoffs, and he's producing at the rate that he is, I think he'll definitely – I think he could really get MVP here. I think it's very realistic. Um, so, I, I, you know, I know most people will be like, hate the Astros – but I can see it happening. He's, he's a good kid. I, he's got a level head on his shoulders. And if you've 
you've been paying attention this whole quarantine. He's been grinding out. He's been, you know, he's been hitting a lot. He's been really staying sharp this whole time. And especially because there are a lot of players who haven't been. And I think that is really going to elevate him from the rest of the competition. So I think um, in the AL, I think he can do it. I think he can pull it off. And for the NL, who else but my guy? Who else but Bryce could get them <laughs> This man has been grinding so hard since quarantine started. Baseball has been at the forefront of his mind. For all you haters who say Fortnite has been, you can I, – I, I won't even say the nasty things that I could say to you right now. But my point being is this man has grinded hours. I looked at his – I mean, again, when I say I might be the biggest Bryce Harper fan out there, I'm not kidding. I saw his workout plan. I saw how many hours he puts in at the cages every day. He'll go to the gym, go to the cages, then rest for a little, head back to the cages just to practice some more. And then, yeah, the man unwinds a little bit by entertaining us with his presence in Fortnite. And he's just the man of the people, all right? He mm-hmm. plays, and sue me. I promise you that he's going to pop off this year. And I think he's going for an MVP. This dude is going to crush it this year. And I can't wait. See, that'll be my face. That'll be my face when he gets MVP. I'll just go, go like that, just admiring it. I'll be looking up at my TV, and I'll be admiring it. Because he's going to get MVP. I'm going to be real happy. And Zach Cullen, Zach Cullen, if you're watching, he's going to beat Trout out. All right? I know, they, I know there's an NL and an AL MVP. I'm not a moron. But at the same time, I know that he is going to get more MVPs He's going to go three straight. You heard it here first. Three straight MVPs. He'll, Trout won't get another one in his life because he sucks. And he doesn't deserve to be a Philadelphian. So, Bryce is getting it. That's all I got to say. I think that's uh, no shocker there with that one. I'll be honest. <laughs> Not at all. all right, Nate. <laughs> let's, um, on that note, let's I will, see what I will, com- <laughs> I will combat the other side of Ian's argument, how he's talking about Mike Trout. Mike Trout is my AL MVP. Um, you can't go wrong with the defending MVP. This guy, he's a once-in-a-lifetime once athlete, much like, um, you know, Michael Jordan is one of the best of all time. Mike Trout is also one of the best of his time. And I think that his last season was pretty impressive. The Angels, you know, fell short, but he still popped off. Um, I think that's always going to be a consistent with him. Um, and I think that you know, like Connor has them as a Cinderella story, they have a lot of weapons going forward. And I think that he will continue to bloom with this young, fresh season, you know, with uh, everything going on. And it'll be tough to determine an MVP, you know, in a, in a Cy Young winner, just with how short the season's going to be. But the thing is, is that Mike Trout is always noticeable. He's, he doesn't dip. He doesn't spike. He kind of just is Mike Trout, you know. So <laughs> um, I think that he'll – and, of course uh, – um, He's just consistently shown that he will get better each year. He puts in the work. I know uh, Ian is not a big fan of him, you know, uh, but you can't deny his talent, much like you can't deny, you know, Belichick's yeah. coaching ability, That's stuff yeah. like that. No, I, um, I just say that because I do hate him. I, I understand that the man is yeah. – mm-hmm. let me just say – I don't want to yeah. look like a total moron. <laughs> you just don't like him. Yeah, like, I got you. I just don't – I just genuinely don't like the guy. And when yeah. I don't like an athlete, I will say things about them sometimes that are completely untrue. But I mm-hmm. will try and preface it by saying I know they're talented. Let's yeah. Clear he's, that up too. Mm-hmm. He's, he's good. And so my NL – this one's a little – um. It's not like the most popular to take, but Pete Alonso. Um, I, I know it's a little crazy that he would be winning an MVP, um, but I think that this guy is like with Vlad. Um, they're both, you know, franchise stars. They're going to be insane for the next ten years, almost. You know, the season that he had was insane. Fifty-three dingers. I mean, that alone is just crazy. Yeah. The guy can only seek to improve. He can only go up from here. Like you don't. You see a sophomore slump in football or uh, – yeah, it's just football. But you don't see that – I don't think you'll see that with him. But the Mets also, they had a pretty good season coming in. And I think that, that they'll do even better. It'll be tough for, for the Phillies. But I think that he will continue to blossom. He will become the center point of that Mets team. And I think that um, that would be – you know, and the, the, the Mets are a big Apple team. So it'll be a nice 
rivalry between him, you know, against Aaron Judge or Stanton, you know, stuff like that. So I'm excited to see what he does. Um, even though he's a rival, I, I, I love the guy. He seems like a, you know, a, a, just a great guy, loves the sport. So those are my two MVPs, not the most surprising with Mike Trout, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's, they're winning. I'm telling you, you heard it here. It's like you heard Ian Bryce Harper. You heard it here. Cubs awesome. they ain't winning it, but he should, he deserves it every year. Cubs <laughs> awesome stuff. I, so I went with two NL guys. If you, if you want me to pick an NL MVP, mm-hmm. I'm going to pick Vladdy, you know, Call me up. I can have a whole conversation with you on Vladdy. I didn't want to take up too much time. I, I adore him. He's my favorite non-Philly athlete, so I don't want to spend much time on him. Mm. So I went with two NL MVP guys, mm. and also because I've been you know, out of the baseball loop so long, I forgot there was two league MVPs for a hot second. But if I had to pick an AL one. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> if I had to pick an AL one, to be Vladdy. Uh, so that's my excuse. But so the two guys I picked for the NL race, Oh, this this guy's right up there with Vladdy. Uh, Fernando Tatis Jr., I, I get post notifications for him and Vladdy on Instagram just because I, I, I'm a loyal fan. So <laughs> I love both of them so much. <laughs> he can just – he can do it all, man. I mean, I remember watching him steal home on a pop fly in the infield last year. Um, well, it was like a little bit out of the infield. But, you know, it, it was very sneaky, and it was oh, – mm. it just was such, such an electric play. Is my internet okay right now? Yeah. It's yeah, it's on and off, but yeah, you, we can okay. hear you. I think I'm good now, but yeah, I love Fernando Tatis. You know, he, like I said, he can do it all. He's fast. He can hit for power. He can hit for contact. He can throw. He's a great shortstop. Um, he's got great hair too. I love the dreadlocks. They look so. Do- it's it's almost. I don't know if I just like blonde dreadlocks or something. It just looks dope. Uh, you know, I like Vladdy too, and he <laughs> has the same hairstyle. So. Um, I might just be a little biased in that aspect, <laughs> but you know, he's, he's 21. And he's just like such a disciplined player. You know, I think he's got a great work ethic. I love this kid. I think he's gonna have a great year and really build off his rookie year. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for him. And then mm-hmm. as much as I hate to say it, I really do think Juan Soto is going to have another great year. Um, I mean, you saw what he did in the playoffs last year and I just think – I really think there's a good chance he's going to – you know, it's been a while, but I think he's going to carry that momentum over to the next season. And as much as I hate the Nationals, um, you know, not obviously not as much as some of the other hated Philly sports teams, but, um, you know, you got to give it to Juan Soto. He's 21 years old. You know, he he's very disciplined as well at the plate. I mean, he works more walks than most guys. You know, he does a very good job of just, you know, picking out his pitch and – having good pick re- pitch recognition. Um, you know, you just look at his numbers from the first two seasons. It's pretty unworldly um, to think about. Obviously, you know, there's other guys who are on another another tier, but Soto is pretty, pretty good for his age. Um, so I do think he's going to have a good season. I, I mean, obviously I hope he doesn't because he's in our division, but I think we're going to, yeah. I think we're going to see him blossom again. Um you know, I think he's going to be a force to reckon with in the division. So, yeah. um, and now moving on to potential Cy Young candidates. Nate, why don't you start us off for this one? Uh, may have also picked two NL MVP uh, or uh, Cy Youngs. Oops. Uh, but I think that both of these are. Uh, so the first one, uh, our own Phillies, Zach Wheeler. Um, and the reason I pick him over Aaron Noah, I think that Noah will have the better season. But I think that Wheeler has the potential or had the potential to have a more of a breakout season than Nola, you know, tra- tra- joining a different team, not being the center point, but still being a big piece. I think that he could really um, blossom with us, um, especially with the new coaching staff and everything going on with the Phillies. Um, so that that was kind of my uh, – I, I don't think he'll do better than Nola, but I think he has more potential to, to – break out better than Nola. I think Nola will be consistently good, but I think Wheeler has a, is in a u- unique opportunity to breach out. Um, and I'm excited to see what he does with us, if he does anything, you know, unfortunately with the things with his, you know, family, but um, my second pick, oh boy, I miss this guy so much. As you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a big Rangers fan. Uh, I love Adrian Beltre. I love that team. You Darvish, he's no longer with them, but boy, <laughs> does this guy have talent. I love you Darvish. He, he is, Oh my gosh! I would just watch, I would just watch his curveball and be like, <laughs> like fifty-five miles what? an hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, he, the guy is. I love that guy. And so he, he didn't have the best 
overall season last year. But if you just look at his second half of the season, it was phenomenal. The guy in his last 18 starts, he threw 151 strikeouts and only 12 walks. Like, that's just insane. Pretty the good. guy, <laughs> the guy, that's pretty good. And so I, I'm not sure, you know, why, if it was him just getting warmed up or something just clicked, but he, ha- he definitely can show that he can perform when he needs to be. And the guy is going to have that opportunity. And I think that if, if the right Hugh Darvish shows up, he's going to have 151 strikeouts in 18 games. So, um, yeah, I think he has, he's still got talent. He's got talent around him. And I think that um, it'd be cool to see, you know, him pop off. Yeah, that's my, uh, that's my two Cy Young potential candidates. Awesome. I'm going to hop on next and then Ian, you can finish us off. And for contacts, I just, I just did the contacts, not contacts. Um, I was thinking <laughs> of Nate's contacts TikTok. <laughs> but, oh, no. <laughs> Don't plug <anyway>. like that. <laughs> anyway, um, just for context, though, what Nate said about the strikeouts, I just did the math, and that's if you round up, <laughs> that's 19 strikeouts a start. <laughs> so, Woo, that's... I mean, <laughs> there were some pretty good performances in there, I bet. But yeah, uh, my, my first Cy Young candidate, I also picked two NL guys um, that I just kind of stood out to me. Um, Walker mm, Bueller is my got first good one. pitching. Yeah. Mm. I, I personally don't really like Walker Bueller. Um, I think he's pretty cocky. But I think mm-hmm. he's really talented, and I think mm-hmm. you know it's kind of like it's kind of like he's kind of player who's cocky, but he can back it up, and he's very confident in his ability as well, mm-hmm. very passionate. Um, so I, I respect that about him. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, obviously the velocity is there. He's just a flamethrower. He's got good command, um, good move, like everything you could ask for in a pitcher. Honestly, you know, I, I I looked up a little bit of a scouting report, more of a scouting report on him, just to get a better understanding and. Um, sounds like his two seamer and his slider really do move and he uses them effectively. It's one thing to have good stuff. It's another thing to know when to use, uh, mm. pitch. so I think he's very good in, mm-hmm. in that aspect. I mean, he's had pretty good numbers too. You, you just watch him pitch. He's, he's built for the big moment. You know, he's been on Sunday night baseball a lot before, um, he's pitched in a combined no hitter, which I found out. I actually don't even remember hearing about that, um, at all. But, you know, he's also been an all-star. So I, I do think, like, he's so young. And, you know, I think he's only going to get better. Um, and he's learning under Clayton Kershaw, too, which is, you know, Clayton hasn't obviously mm. performed playoffs, but it's a pretty good pitcher to learn under. Yeah. You know, no matter, regardless yeah. of the postseason resume. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think he's going to have a good year. Second guy is more of an under-the-radar guy, Dakota Hudson from the Cardinals. Um, you know, obviously yeah. – Jack Flaherty is the big story for them. He's very good too. I think he's a year younger than Dakota, but I think with Dakota, he's the, he's more the number two guy, or like you know he doesn't have to be that ace like Flaherty is going to be expected to be. So I think maybe that takes a little pressure off him, and he can kind of break out. And you know you got other veterans in there. You've got you know you got Adam Wainwright who's been been in the big game before. Um, I think I believe Miles Michaelis came over from another country playing after not doing so well stars big league career from me if I'm wrong but he's he's a little he's got some experience too so I think mm-hmm. I think he's gonna benefit from that and he had a good year last year he kind of burst onto the scene out of nowhere um I think he was I think he was an early pick in the draft not long ago his pitching arsenal is solid I think he's comfortable with the pitching arsenal it's not anything crazy but it's he keeps it simple and he gets the job done so you know mm-hmm. he didn't have a great postseason kind of got torn up there but he's young. I think I think he's going to be really motivated to bounce back because he's been waiting so long to redeem himself in the postseason now. And I think he's going to really come back with a passion now and want to pitch well. Um, and I think you see, like, you know, Aaron Nola. Yeah. Aaron Nola just has never had a number two, and it's so important to have that number two guy. So I think yeah. maybe Dakota takes a – pitching is in a – it's not a position where, you know, at, like running back where, you know, you're going to – you're considered a really good role player for doing this job. In, in baseball, if you're a pitcher, you could – it's all on you as a pitcher. It's up to you as a hitter too. Um, you know, as long as you put up the numbers, you're going to be hopefully considered for some of those awards. So mm. yeah, that's what I have to say on that. Ian, why don't you take us out, man? Another uh, Phillies Astro pair. <laughs> yeah. um, again, the, the nice thing is I don't think any of you will have any beef with this one because there's no way he could have possibly cheated because he's a pitcher. <laughs> True. He definitely no. cheated. And, also, Nate, I wanted to point out, I'm sorry I giggled during your thing, but when you said I love you, Darvish, I just thought it was funny because it sounded like you were saying 
love you, and then Darvish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Only you would think that. I'm going to be honest. Like, but of course. I'm sorry. It may be. <laughs> but, um, no. I do think – and, honestly, this is the man who my love of the Astros is rooted in, and it's Justin Verlander. Um, I mean, I know that's like, oh, you picked the most obvious one. Well, yeah, I picked the most obvious one. And this man's been, like, a literally a man amongst children in pitching. I mean, this dude is just another level of good. He was a Cy Young nominee last year. To be quite honest, I think he would have won if Garrett Cole didn't have like a what, – what do you have, a 2-1-1 ERA? Or I'll something, it up. It was something crazy. Crazy like yeah. that. I mean, yeah. he had – like Garrett Cole had a freakish ERA. And Verlander still had a 2 5 eight ERA, which is absolutely nuts. Yeah. And like – the dude is still grinding out during quarantine. Mm-hmm. He's staying fresh. He's staying healthy. And to be quite honest, he's just still – like, last year he did not look like he was slowing down at all. I mean, he still looks like he is just this incredible pitcher, this otherworldly talent. And the dude's 37. I mean, yeah, is he old? Like, yeah, but yeah. he's still crying and he's still cooking. And I'll tell you what, it will not shock me at all – if you see a Justin Verlander get Cy Young yet again, I mm-hmm. mean, the dude, especially if the Astros, you know, record wise, if the Astros do well and make the playoffs and Verlander pitches like Justin Verlander, which is not a necessarily tall order considering the season he had last year, I think mm-hmm. it's a, almost a lock. Like, I mean, you know, I mean, I know it's like stating the obvious, but I feel like it's almost mm-hmm. a lock for him if. You know, especially if they make the yeah. playoffs. Um, so that's that's my AL, um, my AL Cy Young for my NL Cy Young. Again, can't bring myself. Um, I do have somewhat decent reason for this. Um, I do believe Aaron Nola could be in the running. And to be quite honest, he's been in those conversations for the past couple of years. I know last year he kind of had a down year, but like again, he kind of did the same thing as Eflin. He started out except. Nola started out bad, settled in for a little while there, pitching. I remember there was a two- or three-month stretch where his ERA was sub-two. I yeah. believe it was like 1-7 or something like that. It was yeah. crazy. And then he did get fall off the wagon a bit, and then near the end he tightened it back up. And the year before that he was in Cy Young talks. And the only reason I think he was precluded from that was because the Phillies were, were such hot garbage, and he's yeah. only – one pitcher in a five-man yeah. rotation. And Jacob so, Brown had, like, a crazy ERA. Yeah. Yeah, and that is another thing. DeGrom had a crazy – yeah, it's a very good, very great point. Um, I honestly failed to consider. Um, but between all that, I really think that Nola, especially now that, Stra- um, you know, Strasburg is out of the NL, um, that will definitely help him. Um, granted, you still have Scherzer and DeGrom, but Nola's al- almost always in that conversation. Um, and to be quite honest, I think, you know, he can – the Phillies perform well and he performs up to Aaron Nola, um, his potential as a pitcher. Not to mention, again, I know I keep harping on this, but it's just true. The pitching coach – the pitching coaching staff is just going to be uh, so much better yeah. than it was last mm-hmm. year. Girardi pitching coaches prepared compared to Gabe Kapler coaches <laughs> are so much better. It's mm-hmm. absolutely insane. Also, not to mention that, you know, if, if Nola's pl- – now, granted, it won't matter because of the DH now, but hypothetically um, – well, actually, not even hypothetically. You know, if Nola's having a good game – He's not going to pull him. You know, he's not going to pull yeah. – he's not going to uh, pull Noel. He's cruising in, like, the seventh inning. He's going to keep him in there until, you know, maybe he – you know, Noel says he's tired or Noel expresses something. Now, granted, I know it was mainly because of the situation, like I was talking about earlier with the pinch hitter, when it was Noel was cruising, we were down by one run, which has happened multiple games last year. But even so – Girardi's going to be the guy that will keep Nola in if Nola feels good and Nola's hot and Nola just wants to keep cruising. Like, I am really excited. I think, honestly, Nola can't, has the potential to take this home. Again, especially if the Phillies button it up like I think they will this year. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, sure, yeah. to your point, Nola's just been through pitching coach after pitching coach, and mm. to see the success he's still had despite that is yeah. very impressive. So yeah, it's, mm. and then Tough. one more one more MLB question, and then um, I don't know. I might separate these into two separate podcasts for MLB expectations and Phillies expectations, but because um, we still got some Phillies questions to get through. But just one more general question to wrap up our <laughs> MLB our MLB section. Um, mm-hmm. we'll try to keep this brief, but what's just like one thing with this season? Um, hold on. My internet's bugging out again. I think I'm good now. Oh, no, we can't hear you. Oh, you're good. Okay. <laughs> you, yeah. Okay. It said it like a robot good. from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> But it's like a, it's a, you know, guys, it's a new addition to the Take podcast. We're adding voice mods. No. <laughs> <laughs> but what's uh, like, sorry? What are you saying? Yeah. No, you're good. Just one general aspect. Try to keep it brief. Just like one thing that you're just really looking forward to this MLB season. Um, so, mm-hmm. Nate, why don't you start us off? I'll tell you one thing that I. Okay, it's gonna be a little bit broad, but I'll, I'll shorten it. Don't worry. One thing that I uh, wished I did more last year was enjoying a nice hot summer day watching the Phillies game. Yeah. Like, uh, I remember uh, when opening day happened, I got home early to watch the game and, uh, and I watched the game right at home on my <laughs> couch. And I was like, this is, this is the dream. And then I sort of kind of died off over the summer, but like, y- it's funny. You, re- you realize the things that you wish you had when you don't have them. And so I think for me, it's just as simple as just watching the boys play, you know, like, uh, I, I'm excited to see. And I'll be honest, I kind of started losing a little bit of interest after we started. So, I mean, I still wasn't, you know, paying attention to the news, but it crushed me when Kutch was down with the ACL. It just was like, uh, it sucked. But um, I, I guess my overall thing is just watching the boys play, but Kutch coming back. That's all I care about. Let's go. <laughs> 22, that's all I want. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's, yeah, just seeing the Phillies play. I love Kutch. That as much as Ian loves Bryce, I wouldn't say I'm that extreme, but I this guy I would I'd follow into battle, you know. <laughs> um, and I'm excited to see him get back to his uh, his habits, you know. Yeah, respect, Nate. Ian, Ian, what about you? What are, What are you most looking forward to? I mean, I'm I think I might know the answer. I mean, but... I mean come on, come on. How can I not? I I'm not kidding when I say. He is – I think he was on my list for favorite Philly athletes ever. I mean, the amount of love that I hold for Bryce Harper, I'm just so excited to see Bryce. And just plain and simple, I miss him. I've never, I don't think I've seen many athletes love the city of Philadelphia as much as he does. And I know that he is going to relish every second he gets to express how much his, he loves the city and how thankful he is that he – is in Philly. I love hearing it. It is like music to my ears. I sometimes, I'm going to be honest with you guys, when I'm sad sometimes, I will literally put on clips of him listening to how much he loves, you know, help, listening to him talk about how much he loves Philly and how special we are. And it, it puts me in a good mood. I, I miss his clutchness. I miss everything about Bryce. I, I, again, I, I was in tears of joy when he hit the walk-off Grand Slam. And to be quite honest, I cannot wait for my man Bryce Harper to take the field again. And he'll trust me, he'll hear me all the way from Newtown how much I love him. I mean, he will know. He will know I'm out there. So, yeah, I again, Bryce Harper, easily the one I'm looking forward to most. Absolutely adore the guy. Just can't wait. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I've grown to like him more. Um, I'll be honest. I uh, when he first got traded, I was like, "Oh, that's a lot of money for him," you know. But really? um, in size. But he, I think I mean he's got the energy. He's got that Philly mentality, and I'm excited to see him. You know, yeah. pop off <laughs> for sure. Yeah, and I think for me, I think it's just going to be like maybe the uncertainty and surprises that could come with the season, just like. Like Nate mentioned, like the Mariners and Padres both finished last, but who knows? Maybe they take, you know, steps forward and take advantage of such a short season. I think it's going to be – it'd just be really cool to, like, see some of these teams go from worst to first in one year. And then maybe, yeah. run, like Ian said, catch lightning in a bottle. So, um, that's something like, you know, being a Phillies fan um, during the rebuilding years, 
holding out hope until they were officially eliminated. <laughs> I, I <laughs> did that with the Sixers during, you know, their rough seasons too. Process. And just thinking about like, you know, if this had happened during that time, how excited I would have been that my garbage team was going to get a shot at making a run at a title, um, which is just, uh, it's so exciting to think about. I think it'd be really cool if maybe like an mm-hmm. underdog team won this year, and, and, you know, unless they beat the Phillies out, obviously. But uh, yeah. that kind of wraps it up for our MLB section. 2-2. Two, two. This one's out towards center field. Towering shot. Chasing Trout back. That ball's hit pretty good. And at the wall, Trout leaps up. And he got it! Oh, my! Are you serious? One down! <laughs> that might be one of the most amazing plays you will ever...